Hey guys, you are most welcome again on my YouTube channel and today we are going to deal with this question Chaucer as the father of English poetry or Chaucer's language and versification and if we, we want to prove him as a father of English poetry we must know his language and his versification or in this video I have not uploaded this video because I am not at home and but sometimes I find time to make a video and uh, if we are going to analyze an A's, we should take the you know the best poet of the A's or best writer or we can say leading writer of the A's and we can come to conclusion and we can uh, have lots of examples so let's go through this one and uh, who can be better than Chaucer to analyze and he is the father of English literature Chaucer has rightly been called the father of English literature, but why? He founded English language and poetry alike. And Albert calls him the earliest of great moderns. Why we are calling him moderns, as you can see here, why we are calling him moderns? Just because he imparted modernity to English language and poetry. Before Chaucer, as we know, uh, before Chaucer, they were using old poetry and uh, he nobody was uh, doing any experiments with language and Chaucer was the first person who did that it is through him that it's a free secular spirit first expresses itself in our poetry Matthew Arnold was right in assertion that with him is born our real poetry so M Matthew Arnold uh, quote it that with him is born our real poetry Matthew Arnold ne kaha ki unke saath mein hamari jo real poetry and uh, we can analyze whatever we have studied up to this video there was uh, not worth reading poetry okay and representative work nahi tha koi he was rightly recognized during Runisa as the father of English poetry father of words who is immortal song first taught the muse to speak the English tongue new poetic subjects so first thing was uh, he introduced new poetic subjects second is his humor and pathos as you know uh, in his canterbury tales he has uh, used lots of examples and uh, character who shows great humor and uh, pathos chaucer's language and versification he um, he was using you know different versification than the previous poets next topic we will be talking about okay today we will be use uh, talking about these in this video so let's take the first one new poetic subject as regards Chaucer Chaucer's poetic material he unhesitatingly took that what suited him he sometimes borrowed wholesale without change and uh, often adapted and uh, reshaped the matter freely he was not bounded and uh, he was using you know freely whatever was suiting him moody and love it right in this connection but what is more important is that chaucer improved whatever he borrowed and uh, it stepped okay why we are using the word borrowed because uh, we used french he was uh, borrowing words from french he was borrowing from latin okay and uh, he brought some words from italy and so on so on so you can uh, see that in his uh, work like the legend of good women and uh, to canterbury tales was original in in every sense and some of the tales have been so radically and widely remodeled that they stand as generally original besides striking the notes of originality chaucer turned his eyes to the life and people of his time that is uh, that is you know peculiar quality of uh, about chaucer ki unhone apne time ke bare mein jo ek description unhone kheecha uh, canterbury tales mein that was of great importance his realism reflects his modernity so realism is part of you know modern literature that's why he is called acha realism jo hai wo modern literature ka ek uh, part hai इसलिए उन्हें अगर हम देखें कि उन्हें कहा गया था हम कह सकते हैं कि the first modern okay first modern poet he is considered because he was using the realism in his work reality 
humor and pathos chaucer is the first genuine humorist in the english poetry so the next thing first genuine humorist okay and a brook writes sometimes his humor is broad sometimes shy sometimes gay but it is uh, also exquisite affectionate his pathos does not go into the far depths of sorrow and pain but it is always natural he can bring tears into our eyes and he can uh, make us smile and be said as he pleases so it's a great thing uh, he implies everything in his um, in his works chaucer's language and versification chaucer is the first national poet of england so you can see how many times we are using the word first okay first poetry first humorist first because he was the first person who used uh, you know uh, everything in a so much versatile way to aap dekh sakte ki unhone har cheez ko kis tarah se use kiya that's why he is called uh, father of english poetry so re- reformed and reshaped ev- everything we have talked about there were four dialects remember this this is very important okay four dialects were there southern east midland northumbrian and kentish northumbria you remember okay chaucer popularized the east midland so remember this is this fact uh, is important he popularized east midland dialect by giving it a new form and shape next thing we can say lovey rightly here this is a famous quotation lovey re- rightly remarked he found english a dialect and left it a language spencer called him the well of english undefiled chaucer's style is noticeable for vigor vigor clarity concreteness his images are conspicuous for uncomplicated naturalness they are taken from the familiar areas of common experience for example the monk's horse is brown as a berry the friar's eyes twinkle as dawn the stress in the frosty night frankly's purse is white as morning milk and the uh, threadbare colors mount is bent as is a rake chaucer usually uses simple and direct ob- adjectives to describe his pilgrim <coughs> sorry for example worthy gay bright fair fresh perfect shape sharp wise so he was using you know the general words to describe his pilgrimages and uh, this is the reason it became realistic his description are graphic and startling the description of the wife of bath creates a graphic effect bold was her face and fair and read of hue so this this is very important instead of using courtly and elegant style he was not using you know courtly and elegant style uh, even if he was uh, connected to court chaucer preferred the simple and racy vocabulary to colloquial english and uh, here is a good remark about this uh in its uh, racy turn of phrase and uh, pithy commentary the style of general blog is close to the terse pungent manner of the provincial proverbial saying which are scattered plentifully through his work by using this direct and richly vernacular style chaucer is able to secure an effort effort effect of of sensational reality in which material object take on a heightened power as though seen with the intensity of imaginative sight so we dealt with the the topic chaucer as the father of english poetry hopefully you have enough idea now about this topic we will be uh, we will carry on this topic thank you for watching bye bye take care good luck for you